Yo, yo, it's the Ranch Ferry, and uh, this week's uh, episode of the Ranch Ferry facts thing starts with one Thomas Sowell. There's no solutions, only trade-offs. And today I'm going to talk about the momentum trade-off you get when you shoot downrange with old Twizzler stick going 400 feet per second versus a properly tuned, cut on contact, adult arrow, downrange of 60 yards. It's going to be pretty simple. Probably one of the most boring videos ever. You might not even consider watching it. It's going to be so bad. So stay tuned. going on. <laughs> Really All right, well, I guess you're still here. So I posted a video and here's a picture of the thumbnail if y'all haven't seen that where I shot like a 436 grain arrow and a 650 grain arrow out to 40 yards. This is something I hadn't considered because as Dr. Ed always says, the minute you start testing, more ideas come to your head and you go, wow, I never thought of that. So I had never taken a slider and shot an arrow that was light 40 yards and then zeroed for a 650 yard arrow. I'm going to do a whole video on this later on this year. But what you're talking about is a parabola like this and a parabola that is a little more arched. So you are putting the projectile on the shot line that it would fly on due to its mass and the way it would travel to the target. And in that video with me shooting it, I shot at 40. I backed up to 45. The bow was zeroed for 40. I held for 40 like it was a five yard misjudge. Both arrows hit low and there was a 1.33 inch difference between the impact points of those two arrows. That's significant for what I'm about to talk about because that's not a very big miss at 40 yards. We repeated the test because the comments, the new comment, the new ragging on the Fowler is not that I'm wrong that, not that you shouldn't have sharp broadheads, tune your bow, tune your arrows, bear shaft tune, all that stuff. No, nobody's coming at me for that. <laughs> I get to credit one John Dudley for saying that I have terrible shooting form and I'm the worst shot ever. That at least he's seen, never probably seen, and he's never really seen me shoot in person. But since he said it, now I've got, you're the worst shot ever. That, that test is impractical. You can't shoot. That test is invalid. Mostly because people hate the results. So, I'm not a dumbass. Stupid, but I'm not a dumbass. I repeated the test with two new shooters, with two different draw links. And we did 450 and 650 grains. Here's a picture of that thumbnail. It came out last week if you're fresh watching this. I'm not supposed to really say that because it dates you. I don't care. Anyway, look for that thumbnail if you want to see the results of that. Uh, the results were the same. So that's the dumbest thing to do, by the way, on YouTube. Don't give away the results because then nobody will watch your videos. <laughs> okay. So back to Mr. Soul. There's no solutions. There's only trade-offs. The greatest trade-off you're getting when you are shooting the Twizzler stick and trying to go as fast as you possibly can is downrange momentum. Momentum is the one physics term that can be described simply as it's the thing that keeps the arrow moving. It's the thing that keeps any object moving no matter what it runs into. I have a data set that I've used a bunch I was gonna repeat the data set, but I don't see any reason to do it because it's gonna give me the same results. There's no, there's no new physics, right? 
So I have a, I, we shot a subset of arrows out to 60 yards and we got the launch momentum, KE, all that stuff. And I'm gonna talk about momentum today. The arrows were 388, 436, 514, 589, 616, 670, and 718 grains. The reason why they're not exact is, unlike every other person on YouTube who doesn't try to tune arrows, they just put monster points on and shoot a 400 spine banana stick and then call it good. I walked the spine up and checked arrow flight as you walked up. That's the way you do a test if you're intellectually honest. Some of the big YouTube personalities out there have done this kind of test, but they don't tune the arrows and they sure as hell don't retune their bow because they're big bow tuning guys. So who knows what their arrow flight is? So I walked the spine up. So on the light arrows was like a 350 and then a 300 and a 250. And I tried to maintain the best arrow flight I could. So it's not exact 25 grain deal. So the video with Chris and Ryan, they shot a 450 grain arrow and a 650 grain arrow. But I want you all to see, we're gonna get there. What I want you all to see is the down range momentum. The top line on this graph is, is at the bow, right at the bow, right there. Right where all you super geniuses shoot your chronographs and say, my bow shoot 400 feet per second. Well, not down that. Here's the first uh, graph for momentum. Again, the top line is launch and the bottom line is 60 yards. The 450 grain arrow, I didn't have a 450 grain arrow in this sub set, so I kind of eyeballed it. Ah, 0.54 slugs or so. And that's where it starts, right? At the bow. I'm gonna walk up the scale here. So a 514 grain arrow at 60 yards had almost the same momentum as a 450 grain arrow. Everything's going down, speed, all of it, okay? Never mind the fact that the 514 grain arrow has the same impact momentum as a 436 grain arrow at launch. That's a very common arrow. Mass. That is a big deal, especially for some of you guys that think you're gonna shoot super fast and go shoot a 700 pound bull elk uh, with the old ballistic dud. Walking up, a 589 grain arrow has 0.56 slugs of energy at 60 yards and is greater than the launch conditions of both. No, it doesn't beat 514 by one slug. It is way above 436. All right, so my head stopped, started hurting and I was listening to myself and I knew what I was saying and I was getting lost, which is kind of weird when you're a YouTuber. <laughs> All right, just to clarify, I start, this is our mental break here. Level set. I'm talking about the launch conditions of a 450 grain arrow at the bow versus the impact conditions and the energy and the momentum of the heavier arrows at 60 yards. That is what you need to be focusing on here. When the 60 yard results are higher than the launch, of the lighter arrows, that means that the heavy arrow is retaining its energy, it launched at a higher momentum because it's heavier, and retaining the energy at a level that's higher then the launch conditions of the lighter arrows and the lighter arrows, guess what? Just like all of them, they launch at a higher momentum and they erode. So if a lighter arrow launches at a lower momentum than the heavier arrow at 60 yards, it's getting even worse than the heavy arrow. I hope that's clear, onward. And then I'm gonna jump straight to, and I eyeballed where 650 is. So here's this 650 grain impact momentum at 60 yards, 60 yards. 
And then you look back at the 450 grain arrow at launch, that's coming right out of the bow and you see a significant amount of momentum on target at 60 yards. So everybody who wants to shoot long bomb shots and talks about all this long range archery stuff, which of course you're way better on the 3D targets than you are, you know, out in the mountains with a little bit of downhill and a tree kind of in the way and excited. Let's just forget all that. I can shoot 100 yards if I want to. By the way, at 100 yards, the heavy arrows still put a lot more momentum. This doesn't get lower. It, it continues to expand, right? So back to Thomas Sowell, there are no solutions. There are only trade-offs. What you choose to do, whether you like it or not, with a Twizzler stick shooting 436 grains, is you choose to shoot much less momentum at the bow and ever decreasing momentum thereafter out to 60, 70, 80, which means less momentum, less energy on target, less penetration because there are no solutions, only trade-offs. The big trade-off everybody says is trajectory. Well, earlier in the video I mentioned I shot out to 40, okay, not 60, gotcha. You can, y'all can skewer me on the comments about that because it's, you're doing 60 yard energy and 40 yard shooting. Okay, all fair. When the bow and the sights were set on the trajectory curve for the heavier, higher momentum projectile, it was a 1.33 inch difference between Twizzler stick and an adult arrow. The miss. I, if I remember right, I should go review my video, but I, I just like to act like I'm smart sometimes. I believe it was about three, three and a half inches low when I shot for 45, a five yard miss. Just like say the elk walked and you didn't float the pin, which I'll cover here in a minute. But on a five yard misjudge, I think they were three, three and a half inches low. And then the heavier arrow, of course, was a little lower, 1.33 inches for me shooting it. And you gotta go watch Ryan and Chris and their results because it was very, very similar and duplicated what I found since I'm a terrible shot. One thing Chris and Ryan and I talked about is, this is where things get real impractical with the comments. So you can leave a stupid comment below that you do not have a rangefinder and that you are incapable at full draw of noticing that the elk walked a little further and you would never float the pin. The arrow's not gonna hit higher. I don't care if you're shooting a Twizzler stick or the heavy arrow. But the idea that you're not carrying a rangefinder, and I'm old enough that there weren't rangefinders. We still killed stuff, it's crazy. And the idea that you, say a cow, elk, or a, a mule deer is pushing does, and you laser a tree, or whatever you, whatever you choose, you, dee -dee, okay, 48 yards. You go like this, and they take two steps, and they're quartering away. You cannot tell me whether you're shooting the old Twizzler stick with no momentum, or you're shooting an adult arrow with much higher momentum, that you wouldn't float the pin, send it in a little high, and let it drop in there. Everybody that I talk to, or I'll talk to, these are the detractors and the knuckleheads who leave comments, act like we're locked into a fixed situation, like it's not dynamic at all. The animals never move, everything's perfect. They spend way too much time on a 3D range where everything's real static, you can let down four or five times, and really, you know, get her, get her tucked in there. All this gyrating crap, gotta get the bow. You know, the bow flips left. Man, I went to TAC in San Antonio, it's kind of sad. Everybody used to flip the bow. Now everybody's got this eh thing. You really gotta flex it out. It's like doing reverse flies with uh, dumbbells. You gotta, yeah. So I really miss the bow flip. Cause the bow flip used to be the thing. <laughs> Boom, and just let your hand roll and the bow would just 
Oh, and you were the man if you could bow flip. Whoo! But I do miss it. Um, I think that's why we used to wear straps a lot because everybody bow flip and then bow, bow drop out of your hand and you look like a dumbass when you're freaking shooting. But anyway, the idea that you do not have a rangefinder, the idea that if you see the elk or deer or whatever, take about three steps away from you, you wouldn't float the pin, send it in there, you're insane. That is the worst, well, it's what's called being stubborn. The detractors act like it's a totally non-dynamic situation. Totally fixed. Everything stands real still. Let you get away with it. Yeah, fam. I never see anybody do that when they're shooting deer. <laughs> I started watching videos just to see the shots, and I've never. I don't see these guys go Ugh, like that when they shoot a deer. They're mostly like, you know, because they're excited. So I don't know about the thing, but I guess it's cool. Took over the bow flip, and I missed the bow flip. All right, well, cheers to you. It's raining today, and I couldn't go fishing. Sucks. But I just wanted to cover this topic that if there's no solutions and there's only trade-offs, the idea that the trajectory thing is a thing, uh, well, got two videos on that, and it's not that big a deal when you put the projectile on its own trajectory curve. Again, I'll have a video on that because that's not going to compute with some people and undoubtedly there will be stupid comments in the bottom but please leave them actually the stupid comments are really good because they help me make videos i do want you to consider the energy thing understand you're losing 20 25 percent on target energy at 60 okay when you choose the solution or the trade-off to be what you think is trajectory, when you could just put the heavier mass projectile on its trajectory curve, and 20 still 20, and 40 still 40, and in between 20 and 30 is 25. It's the same. And so with sliders and uh, laser rangefinders and some of the people I've been on podcasts with who are big tough guys, you know they are freaking. Oh, they're the best shooters ever. They never miss then that means they could shoot an 800 grand arrow and they would never miss. Oh, but they'll say, the arrows drop out of the sky. You know, spoiler alert. When you shoot the heavier projectile on the trajectory curve for a Twizzler stick, it's gonna look like it falls out of the sky. But if you put it on its own trajectory curve, I tested it, but I'm a terrible shot. And then Chris and Ryan did it, and they're better shots than I am. The results were the same, and it's not that big a miss. So why would you want to give up on-target energy for theoretical flat shooting bows? All right, that's all. You can subscribe if you want to. I don't care if you do. This is a free country. Do what you want. But I am on YouTube, so, you know, hit the dinger bell or whatever. Send it to your friends, especially the guys who piss them off. And... Uh, Instagram and all that. I'm pretty easy to find on my internet and Instagram stuff. The Ranch Ferry, pretty straightforward. So we'll see you later. Yeah, that's all. Bye.